Hello everyone, I'm Larry, your instructor for financial accounting. And as we begin this first week of our financial accounting course and get into chapter one, I want to provide you a little bit of basic background on the course to help make things easier as you begin your reading. First, I'd like to ask everyone to please read in the textbook about the characteristics, assumptions, and principles of financial accounting. These items are covered in just about any financial accounting textbook in the very beginning. When you see characteristics, you're going to see some new terminology such as relevance and comparability and a variety of other terms that go with that for accounting information. And with assumptions and principles, you're going to see things such as going concern or the historic cost principle. These are not difficult concepts to understand, but it's important that you read about this and get a good background in the characteristics, assumptions, and principles of financial accounting, and that you learn a bit about the basic terminology. Also, you'll be introduced to a new term known as GAAP, that is U.S. Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, and we'll be talking a lot more about that as we get further into our course and as we do the threaded discussions. I'd like to next explain to you what you're going to see in the textbook, but may not be very obvious to you some of the details behind it. And that is the four different financial statements that go together. These financial statements, when looked at by someone who's trained in business, can tell you something about the health of a company. You know, when I go to the doctor, and that doctor will look at a sheet of paper that will list a bunch of numbers about me, numbers such as my cholesterol, let's say it's 165, or my blood pressure is 110 over 70, or they might have numbers that are put into ratios such as high-density lipoprotein to low-density lipoprotein. Some of you may have heard of the HDL to LDL ratio. These numbers tell you something about a person's health. And a doctor can look at those numbers, assess your health, and determine whether maybe uh, some more tests or treatment should be done uh, to help make you a bit healthier. Well, it's the same thing uh, with a company, kind of. It's analogous. Uh, with a company, we look at numbers, specific numbers, to assess the health of that company and determine if there are things we should be doing uh, to improve that company's health. These numbers are shown in four different financial statements. Now, the first is the income statement. What I've put together here is one of the most simple basic income statements that you would see. A typical income statement at the top will list the name of the company, such as the ABC company, and it will also tell you the period uh, for which that income statement applies. And that might be a specific month, it might be a quarter, or it could be over a whole year. Typically, we will look at the income statement uh, for a company that spans an entire fiscal year. At the very top of the income statement, you'll see the term revenue, very often revenue. Now, sometimes it will just show sales, but when you see the term revenue, that is the money that is coming into the company. Uh, some people also refer to this as the gross. Uh, some people will talk about this as being the top line. This is the money that customers are paying us that is coming into our company for doing what we do. Now, in this case, this company sells stuff. So we see this listed as sales revenue. There are some companies that provide services. So this might be listed as service revenue. For a university, it might be listed as tuition revenue. Whatever it is that this company does, they are bringing in money from customers that is the revenue. So at the top line, we see for this year, this company brought in $800,000. That is gross revenue, sales revenue. Now, is the company going to get to keep all of that $800,000? Well, of course not. There are expenses involved, and expenses are money that is going out of the company. I've listed, to make this very simple, just three different expenses here. A utility expense of $25,000 for the year, salaries expense of $100,000, and rent expense of $75,000. When we add all of them up, the total expenses for this company are listed here at $200,000 for the year. Now, what do we do with these numbers on the income statement? We take the sales revenue, the revenue, and what do we do with the expenses? subtract them because the revenue is money that's coming in, expenses, that's money going out of the company. 
revenue minus expenses leaves us with the bottom line net income. Now, some of you are going to say, well, what about taxes? You're not showing any taxes here. Of course, we do have taxes when we run a company, uh, but I'm keeping this income statement very simple. Taxes would also be list on, listed on the income statement, and that would be an additional expense. So in this case, a very basic income statement for this company, for this year, the revenue minus the expenses leaves us with the net income. By the way, you see these 200, this $200,000 listed here for total expenses. Some people might ask, why don't we have a minus sign in front of that? Or why don't we have parentheses to show that this is negative? It's expected that someone trained in business, when they look at an income statement, will simply understand that expenses are subtracted from the revenue. So we take revenues minus expenses. That leaves us with net income. This is the first statement that we prepare. The next statement is the statement of retained earnings. And by the way, you'll see excellent examples of these financial statements in your textbook. When we look at retained earnings, this is an important word here, retained. What does retained mean? It means what we've kept. If we retain something, it's something that we've kept. So retained earnings are earnings that our company is keeping or hanging on to. Now, the typical retained earnings statement will start off with the beginning retained earnings. I've abbreviated that here, RE, the beginning of balance in retained earnings. In this case, I'm going to assume that we're looking at a brand new company. This is the company's first year, so the beginning amount in the pot is zero. Now, we will next add to that the net income for the year. In this case, that's $600,000. Where did we get that? Well, do you remember a moment ago we showed the income statement? The bottom line net income was $600,000 for the year. So we started out in our retained earnings pot, the balance in this pot called retained earnings, with zero. We added in the $600,000 that came in during the year. Then we subtract any dividends that are paid out. Another term for dividends is distributions. When we talk about dividends, and we'll get into this further in our course, this is money that we are, the company is paying out to the owners, whether there is one owner, two owners, five owners, or in the case of a large publicly held company, there might be thousands of owners, maybe thousands of owners, each owning any different number of shares in this company. So when a company pays out dividends, they are giving back some of their earnings. They're giving it to the owners of the company. So for example, let's say uh, a company has 1 million shares outstanding owned by all the different people who are stockholders in that company. And the board of directors declares a 50 cent dividend, that is 50 cents per share for the year. Well, if there are 1 million outstanding shares owned by all of the stockholders, and it's 50 cents that has been declared as a dividend per share, then that company will be paying out $500,000 of its earnings that year to the owners, to the stockholders. So we start out with the beginning retained earnings balance. We add the net income that we got from the bottom line of the income statement, subtract the dividends that were paid out, that leaves us with the ending balance in retained earnings. And in this case, if this company paid out $100,000 that will be subtracted in dividends, $500,000 are left in the pot called retained earnings. And you can see, I drew a small picture here. This is a picture similar to, uh, I tried to draw a picture like you would see uh, with a stainless steel vat that might hold sweet tea when you go to a barbecue place, okay? If you go to a barbecue restaurant. And if you can imagine us putting in the top a fresh brewed batch of sweet tea, and then what comes out the bottom, the spigot, that's our customers who were drawing out of this vat. They're drawing cups of sweet tea out. Well, Similarly, in this case, if we look at this vat, which contains a certain amount of tea, that's like retained earnings in it, what did we put in the top? Well, we have the net income, right? So we'll say the net income 
for this period or year got poured into the top of the vat. That was $600,000. 600000 was added into the top. And during the year, we paid out. We flushed out $100,000 worth of dividends. That came out the spigot at the bottom. So $100,000 was flushed out the bottom. What is left in this vat here? $500,000 is the ending balance. And that's how we set up our statement of retained earnings. Now let's see who the real accountants are here. If this was our first year, our first year of business, and this is our initial retained earnings amount, what do you think the statement of retained earnings would look like the second year of business? What would be the beginning amount of retained earnings? Well, we would simply take the ending amount from the first year, and that comes up to the top here. That's the beginning balance for the second year. Then what do we do with the second year? We add in the net income we earned in the second year. Let's make pretend that was $800,000. Then we subtract out the dividends we paid. Let's say we paid out $200,000 the second year. So what would be the balance left in retained earnings at the end of the second year? We started out with $500,000 in the pot, added $800,000 in net income, subtracted $200,000. That's, that's $1.3 million. Divided by 200,000, that leaves us with how much? $1,100,000 would be left in this pot, in the, begin in the ending retained earnings balance the second year. So that's the second statement, that is the statement of retained earnings. The third statement that gets produced is the balance sheet. And again, you'll see some excellent detailed examples of balance sheets in our textbook. On the balance sheet, you're going to see three categories, three major categories, assets, liabilities, equity. Assets, that's the stuff that the company has, stuff that helps the company do its job. Buildings, land, machinery, equipment, could be a cash that is sitting in the, the checking account or money markets account ready to pay the bills. Liabilities. This is money that the company owes, and very often you'll see listed in liabilities the term payables. We'll get into that further in the course. These are the payables, typically. So we've got all the assets listed. We can total that up. All the liabilities, these are all the line items of what is owed by the company. And then equity. Equity is what is owned. When you see the word equity, you think this is what is left for the owners of the company, whether there's one or two owners or thousands of owners in the case of a large publicly held company. When you look at assets, liabilities, and equity, when you total these three categories up, this equation must hold. This here is the accounting equation. That is, the total assets must equal the total liabilities plus the total equity on the balance sheet. If this equation does not hold, we've got a problem with the balance sheet. It needs to be fixed. There's another way of rewriting this equation. You can just algebraically switch it around and say assets minus liability equals equity. This is just telling us the stuff we have minus what is owed leaves us with what is left for the owners, that is the equity there. And by the way, on balance sheets, when you see the term equity, you may see this written as stockholders equity. You might see it written as owner's equity. Look for that term equity. Equity means ownership. And by the way, one of the items that you will see listed under equity will be an account whose name is retained earnings. That will be listed there. Do you remember where we get that number from? That was already calculated previously and shown on the statement of retained earnings. It was the ending balance for the year. That is then carried over and put onto the balance sheet, listed as an account, the ending balance under equity. And you'll see more about that in the book. So finally, to sum, sum all of this up, there are four financial statements, and I've shown them here in order. First, the income statement then the statement of retained earnings, the balance sheet, and finally there is something we haven't talked about yet, the statement of cash flows. We'll be discussing this more later in our course, 